Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Think on These Things podcast hosted by the Biblos Network. We are so thankful that you have chosen to join us today. And I am so excited about our topic and all the things that we're going to be diving into today. And I think that it's going to be a great blessing to you. But before we get started and before I introduce our special guest today, I just want to say how much we love hearing from all of you. We love your comment. We love questions. Uh, Any feedback you want to give us, you can text the word THINK to 910-600-0498. That's the word THINK to 910-600-0498. And then you can let us know your questions or things you'd like to hear on the podcast. We love hearing from you guys. So I'm really excited about today's podcast. This is something that I've been thinking about doing for a while. We have Olivia Hill on the podcast today. And we are going to be talking about our bodies and nutrition and taking care of ourselves and this is really important because a lot of you are involved in ministry a lot of you are leaders and we know that not only is there a physical element to it but it's spiritual and mental and Olivia has lots of training and she has a burden to help people and so Olivia thank you so much for being on the podcast today yes thank you for having me I'm excited to be here so why don't you tell why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about what you do, what you're what you're doing, and maybe how you came to start doing this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, right now I am a nutrition coach, um, coaching folks through um, nutrition and finding balance um, just in their daily lifestyle and how it correlates um, through nutrition. Uh, I have been to school uh, to get certifications. I'm actually um, certified through Precision Nutrition uh, Level 1. Just today, actually, I graduated uh, Precision Nutrition Pro Coach Level 2. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, And I, um, on the tales of uh, graduating, I enrolled in another class with uh, Precision Nutrition. So I'm going to do that one. And that one's based on stress, sleep, and recovery, um, which are... Oh, wow. Yeah. Very much needed. (laughs) So um, delving into those parts um, is the next part of the journey. So um, I'm excited to to have those certifications and to be able to help folks and coach them um, as they're making choices around nutrition. And really what led me up to this, um, it's... uh, a little bit of a long journey. So about 12 years ago, uh, 12 to 13 years ago, um, I found myself at almost 300 pounds. Um, and I was doing just a little bit of everything to try to lose weight. Um, I posted on my Instagram that there was a time where I made a new year's resolution that I was only going to eat vegetables. Um, and that's all that I was going to do. Yeah. I was going to just, you know, I was tired of being overweight and I thought, And I didn't really have the knowledge or the resources on what to do. And I thought, well, vegetables sound good, so let's just go that route. And uh, I did that for about 48 hours, and then I found out that I wanted more than vegetables. Yes, yes. (laughs) That that was was not going to cut it for me. Um, And at that point, I did um, enroll in Weight Watchers a couple of months later. And uh, Weight Watchers really has a good baseline. It has a good, uh, some good points to it. Um, and for the next two years, I did lose weight on Weight Watchers. I ended up losing 150 pounds wow. on Weight Watchers. Um, so I was successful with that, but then I found that Weight Watchers really did not give me an exit strategy. Um, wow. it did not give me what I needed to, uh, continue or to just maintain that weight loss. So mm-hmm. it was either, uh, try to continue to get leaner and leaner or put the weight back on. Mm -hmm. And that's where it got a little hairy um, Mm -hmm. for me because I, like I said, there was no exit strategy. And if you went to a meeting, they really didn't have any tools to give you um, outside of their plan. And um, 
I got pregnant. Um, I was able to keep the weight off through the grace of God, really. Um, I think the only reason I kept the weight off is because God had this plan for me down the road. Yeah. And um, I truly believe that this is uh, what he's laid out for me to do. Uh, but I found myself, um, after having two children and continually trying to keep the weight off, um, before church, I would get up and run five miles uh, wow. before before going to church, before my kids would wake up in the morning. So we're talking about getting up on a Sunday morning at 5 a.m. to run. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Yes, yes. And I would go, <laughs> um, I would go run for five miles uh, before church, and then I would come home and uh, my husband serves um, as praise and worship leader at our church. I serve in yes. Sunday school department. So uh, everyone listening knows what that lifestyle is like. Oh, yes. Yes. So I would then come back home from my five-mile run, get everyone ready. Uh, we'd get out the door, and then we would run all day at church, you know, have a little break. And then sometimes I would walk in between church. Wow. So um, all that to say, it was not unusual to have 20,000 steps a day. Um, and then really just probably eating around 1200 calories a day. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Yes. And, um, so I just got to a point to where I could not do that any longer. I could not sustain that yep. any longer. My weight was staying off. Um, I never regained the weight. I never had a rebound. Uh, but I said, Lord, there's gotta be a, a better way. There's got to be something different. And he opened the door for me um, into macros, which um, is a, a type of coaching uh, using science-based approach. And through that, it just lit a fire in me. And I understood the science um, that goes into eating and the, the science around nutrition and uh, was able to go to school and get the certifications. And so that's really what my burden to do is to help ladies who are living that similar lifestyle um, either if it's the lady that's the 300 pounds that doesn't know what to do other than to eat vegetables, or mm -hmm. if it's the lady who's eating 1,200 calories and running herself into the ground, um, they may look different on the outside, but on the inside, sure. they're still struggling to find nutritional balance and how that fits into their life. Sure. Well, I saw something on your Instagram the other day. Um, and we'll, we'll link her Instagram for you guys in case y'all want to check it out. But um, this really stuck out to me is I, I think it's one of your clients that you have that's that's a pastor's wife. And she's been on this journey with you. And um, you had quoted some things that she had said. And one of those was something about um, she found herself that she's feeling so much better that she started to dream about ministry again. Yes. And I mean, I'm just like tearing up now just thinking yes. about it um, because that's that's like the connection of our physical bodies and then what's going on mentally as she was so exhausted. Yes. Why don't you maybe talk a little bit about what you're seeing with your clients and your experience about the connection between our physical health and then what's going on spiritually and mentally? Like, all that's connected. Oh, it absolutely is connected. And that lady is the sweetest lady. And um, she works a traditional job and then pastors a church. And she has for wow. years. And um, she came to me and she said, I feel like I'm doing all the right things. And yeah. she is a, a great eater on paper. You know, she ate a lot of whole foods. You would label her a healthy eater. Um, mm -hmm. she's a very healthy eater. She just was not eating enough. Mm -hmm. uh, she was eating a much lower calorie count. A lot of, she was using my fitness pal and my fitness pal will often give you a very low calorie count. Mm -hmm. It's, um, made to sell products, you know? Right. And so it's not going to give you what you really need. Cause then you won't, you are not going to be in a calorie deficit. I don't want to get too lost in that, but um, sure. you know, it's going to put you in lower calories so that you're eating less than you need and then you lose five or 10 pounds. And so then you think that my fitness pal works. Um, but that being said, she was just exhausted. Um, yeah. she was not sleeping well. Um, she had grandchildren, she has grandchildren. She couldn't get down on the floor and play with them like she wow. wanted to. Um, but she was going back to that first analogy of she didn't know how they connected. She didn't know how nutrition could fit any better. She was doing all that she knew how to do. 
Um, and through the course of working together, we've increased her calories. I believe she's 800 calories increased a day. Wow. Um, she has actually lost some inches, wow. but she's gained, um, like she's dreaming about her church and dreaming about the future of her church. Wow. I love so that. her body really almost couldn't even afford the brain power to dream because yeah. everything that she was giving it for food everything she was giving it food wise, it was just using that to survive. Yeah. So with the extra food, her body is in a safe place. She's able to move more. She's able to get down in the floor with her grandchildren and get back up and not feel those aches and pains. Yes. Uh, and she's able to, you know, dream about the ministry again because she's not exhausted. Wow. And that's what I see so many times. Our ladies are moody, mm -hmm. exhausted, um, mm -hmm. short with their children, short with their husbands, sure. uh, you know, their hair is falling out. They yeah. have low self-esteem. Um, and I had another lady, um, that I'm coaching and she, uh, runs an interest group in her church. And this mm -hmm. one really, uh, grabbed a hold of me. She, uh, shared it with me last week. They went out to eat and it was about her and 12 other ladies. And, um, I've been working with this lady for seven months and she came to me, she was completely keto, um, oh, wow. eating only 30 uh, carbs a day Ooh. for years, 30 carbs a day. Wow. That's all she, that's all she knew, you know? And wow. so I don't, it's none of these ladies' faults. This is, they were doing the best that they knew. Um, now she's up to eating almost 200 carbs a day. Wow. Yes. She's come such a long way. Um, again, she is not gaining weight doing this. She's losing inches. She's feeling better. She's went off several medications. Um, and so she was out with her uh, ladies group and it, they sat down to order and she noticed that no one at the table could order freely. Everyone there was so concerned about the number of carbs and could we have the rice? And then it, the conversation went to, well, it's just a night to go out so we can, we can cheat this one time. And, you know, she just really picked up on for the first time ever how much food their choices of food had a stronghold over yeah. them yes. and she said I didn't feel that way and she said I realized at that moment the bondage that I was in over food yes and so she was able to say, hey, ladies, you know, we don't have to do this. You can eat the rice. You can, you know, and she's trying to encourage them. And so those things are so important to us as women to understand more about how to balance those things out. Yes. How to balance out what we're eating so that when we go out, we can actually have a good time. And even more than that, going out, if we're witnessing to someone and we want to take them to dinner... Mm -hmm. We don't want to be on edge about what we're eating. Yes. Our goal is to win that soul and to fellowship yes. with them and to have a good time with them. That's right. But if we're living in fear and anxiety mm -hmm. and battling shame and guilt over what we're ordering at the table, our focus is on that and it's not on that soul. That's right. That's good because um, I hear a lot of, a lot of, women um and i and i've shared this at multiple ladies events um that i've heard apostolic women say the most like just disparaging things mm -hmm. about their yes. bodies yes and it makes me so so sad because all of the things that the bible talks about about how special we are about yes. how carefully and beautifully God took the time to create us and so much so that you know the that scripture that talks about that he's not he's he's not dw dwelling in a temple made with hands he's dwelling inside of us now he doesn't dwell in a building he's dwelling inside of us and sometimes we focus so much on just uh, our spirits that we forget about our bodies yes. and how much our bodies affect our spirits yes. and our mental health. And um, not just women. Um, of course, women yes. are notoriously, you know, we struggle a lot with body image. But yes. sometimes our, our men as well as leaders, they're so exhausted and they're so stressed yes. out. 
And then it's this cycle of stress eating, yes. overeating, and then extreme under eating and mm -hmm. these extreme diets to say, well, I've got to lose this. I think the most popular thing now that I've heard recently, of course, keto, but then it's like the 75 hard. Have you heard oh, people yes. talking about that? Oh, yes. Yeah. And so they're doing like all of these extreme, um, you know, eating and uh, extreme lifestyles to try to balance that out when really – if you look at the New Testament, especially at Paul's writing, at Paul's writings, it was all about balance. He was trying yes. to encourage Christians, let's live a balanced, a balanced life. Yes, absolutely. And, and so that's, you know, that's what we're talking about here. Um, let's live a balanced life. Let's not just focus on the spiritual and then of course think on these things we're talking about mental but let's yeah let's balance what we're how we're viewing our bodies as well yes absolutely i and i think balance and balancing your self-talk too because that is so important um you know when women talk about food and men too to some degree but when women talk about food um you know it's a fear and it's an anxiety and Am I going to gain weight? And um, what's this food going to do to me? And how am I going to feel? You know, it's just, and I feel like that through that, we're just constantly whispering doubt to ourselves. We're constantly yes. circulating fear in our lives with that. And then along with that guilt and shame, mm -hmm. I feel guilty for eating this. I shouldn't have ate that. And so all of these things that we fight in the spiritual we sometimes bring in when we don't balance our eating appropriately. You know, we bring in that guilt and that shame and we bring in cheat days. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a client the other day and I said, <laughs> when is cheating ever a good thing? You know, when mm -hmm. do we ever say I cheated and I feel, you know, great about that. But in the mm -hmm. diet culture, a cheat day is supposed to be something that you look forward to, something that you celebrate. I had a cheat day and that's okay. So why is it that we glorify cheating in mm -hmm. nutrition, Good. but but we don't in any other aspect of our life? So Good. it really feels like the balance and the scales are off, the scales, so to speak, but the, the balance is off when it comes to that because we pull in so many negative connotations when it comes to eating. And we can do really well in other aspects, but then it's like this little secret that, you know, we deal with behind closed doors about mm -hmm. our body image and about what we're eating and the way that we share that with our family and our children. And, yeah. you know, it, it just spreads. Well, and you've really hit on something there because I have talked with a lot of, um, and I know you've got girls and I've got <laughs> yeah. girls too. Yeah. And I've talked with a lot of young ladies that are, are um, young adults teenagers now and they're hearing these messages like um oh if if I was thin like you I wouldn't have anything to worry about or oh, yeah. um you know oh you want to keep yourself you want to make sure that you're you know thin when you're young because otherwise and, and so it's kind of like perpetuating yes. this negative self-talk. So then the message is, if you hear, oh, I wish I was thin like you, then the young lady is thinking, okay, well, if I am not this thin anymore, then that's bad. Right. That's the end of me. Yeah. That's the end of my self-worth. That's the end of, of anything because we lay that foundation you know, enjoy it while you can. You just, you know, you've said that. Enjoy, <laughs> yes. enjoy it while you can, because one day you're not going to be yes. able to, you know, do this and, and do that, you know, and that's not true. Um, yes. But we set that up um, through the way that we talk to ourselves, the way that we talk, you know, to ourselves in front of our children, or even as a, a young minister over a, a young group, you know, if you're using that kind of language even joking around you don't really know who can take that serious or yes. maybe battling those things at home um or in their own mind so i think we've got to find the balance like you were saying we've got to find the balance in what we're eating we've got to educate ourselves on what balance looks like yeah um, balance is not 
a mix of pink drinks that you put into bottles and drink, you know, so many drinks a day, or you eat so many bars a day, Mm -hmm. um, you know, balance goes back to the basics. It goes back to, you know, some fruits, some vegetables, some water movement, um, you know, understanding more of what your body responds to, um, and honoring that, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times if we're hungry, we push that away and we think that that gets us a medal of honor when really, when we push that hunger away, we are inviting moodiness into our lives. We're inviting, um, you know, just low energy. And when you think about the type of Christian that you want to be, you want to be somebody that brings forth your best, you know, bring forth your a game, so to speak. And if you're, eating poorly, overeating or undereating, it's going to be really hard for you to bring your best into ministry. That's good. Well, that's good because I think it's important to us for us to think about the examples we're setting. There's definitely um, more, uh, probably uh, not the main focus of things that we focus on as like apostolic Pentecostals, but there's probably a thread of disordered eating whether that be starving yourself yes. or or binge eating um, mm-hmm. and just going overboard in certain periods and just overeating, 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 and then saying, oh, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to starve myself now. Yes, yes. And, you know, in the name of we're not like the world, we don't, we don't focus on our bodies, then we say – um, you know, well, we're just not going to address this. Yes. And so that's why I'm glad that people like you are as an apostolic Pentecostal Christian are coming out and saying, Hey guys, Hey folks, ladies, minister's wife, pastor's wife, there's a balanced way Mm -hmm. to address this. Yes, absolutely. And I think it's, um, Sometimes it seems to be overwhelming is what I'm getting a lot of response, you know, that to take care of themselves seems so overwhelming and we can find ourselves taking care of so many other things that we put ourselves on the back burner. But you brought up a good point that it's not all about being the skinniest person or it's not all about like putting your body out on display. Um, I follow holiness, modesty standards, 110%. Um, I have since I was 17 years old. Um, so at 300 pounds and at 150 pounds, all the same. So it was never about me presenting a body that I was going to flaunt or show off. Good. I love that. That's good. Never the point, never the point. And it shouldn't be our point, but our point should be to feel well, to feel whole so that we can present our best selves as a whole self, as a, as a leader, as a mother, as a sister or a mentor so that we can present the best that we can be. Good. Um, you know, I don't, I definitely, and I'm so glad you brought that up because I definitely don't want it to get lost that it's about being our skinniest self to show, you know, you know, we are doing all the right things. Uh, because sometimes you might feel your best and not be your skinniest self, but you're taking care of yourself. But, um, you know, they, I hear a lot that it's just overwhelming, um, sure. to take care of yourself and to feed yourself properly. Um, and that is one thing that I help ladies do is let's break this down into small achievable goals, you know, keep some things in your purse that will help keep you going. If you're busy running between two and three church services, or you've got uh, a funeral after a service, or you get called into a meeting, yes. you know, learning how to balance those things out so that you can continue to fuel your body while you're helping others. It's not that you're putting yourself completely in front of others. It's that you're learning how to bring the boat aside and do those things together and harmoniously. Well, and the Bible does, the Bible does tell us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy, holy. holy. And a lot of times we just think that means, um, you know, holy, all the holiness, godly standards that we think of. But of course that word holy is about being whole. Yes. Physically, spiritually, mentally. And so, so this is a part of it. I know, I know for me, um, 
And then uh, maybe you can share with us some some tools and um, maybe talk about um, influencing our, our children as well in just a few minutes. But I know for me, like you said, I could identify with what others have said that it can feel really overwhelming to take care of yourself. Um, at the beginning of 2020, I was probably the heaviest I had ever weighed. And I was doing really like restrictive whole thirties and paleo diet. And I was eating whole foods mm -hmm. and I would go out to eat and almost have like a nervous breakdown yeah. because yeah. I would like, what can I eat? And I would like, this is so funny. I would like go to the grocery store and would like sneer at the bags of frozen vegetables yes. because I would be like, there's additives in there. Oh yes. my gosh. I can't believe it. Like, and, and it was, it was, it was in the name of being healthy, mm, yes. but I, I just didn't have the tools and just happenstance. I ran into someone that was just an acquaintance and they mentioned about um, macros and like um, some things that I could do to because I was just talking about struggling with my weight and they mentioned yeah. a program to me that was based on macro counting and oh my goodness yes I learned so much about nutrition yeah. and it absolutely I've I've never felt better Mm -hmm. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant now. And of yes. course I, I get like the, <laughs> the, the like so many, so much food, but yes. I, I have so much energy. Um, we're busier now than ever. And it has just completely revolutionized my life to not live so restrictively yes. and not be yes. so burdened down by the anxiety of eating. Because actually mm -hmm. I, uh, I think you could probably talk about this. The more you learn about nutrition and understand how your body needs to be fueled, then really the less you have to think about it, the less anxiety yes. there is around nutrition and eating. You just learn the good habits mm -hmm. and you've got the tools to move forward. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, you hit the nail on the head that when you, even though you were eating clean and you, you still had food anxieties, um, yes. you went to the grocery store and almost felt overwhelmed, right? Because you just didn't even, yes. you, you were chasing after the whole 30. I mean, that's, that's a lot to, to digest. <laughs> right. Yes. That's <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Gives you again, the scare tactics on additives and scare tactics on, um, you know, uh, all these what's right and what's wrong and good foods and bad foods. Um, peep my diet soda right now. Like y'all yeah. can't see me, but I'm drinking a diet soda right now. And that used to cause me a lot of anxiety. So yes. I, I drink my diet, diet sodas very happily. Yeah. And I just had one before I got on here with you. <laughs> I just had one and it's just really learning. Uh, you know, I had a client text me today and she um, had eaten um, a lean cuisine and she said, tell me what's good about this and tell me what's bad about this. And mm -hmm. so we're so quick to look to, let's label it good or bad. And yes. we're, we're very quick to do that. Um, and I think from, uh, it's just learned. I mean, we train our children at two years old. This is good. This is bad. And so we sure. want to label it. We want to label things that are good and bad. And I'll also pause and say that macros is short for macronutrients. So good. I won't get too deep into it, but your macronutrients are your fats, your carbs, and your protein. Good. So those are the three foundations that you need. There's also micronutrients, and that's going to be your vitamins and minerals. Okay. So your macros, when we talk about counting macros, um, it's nothing magic. There's no uh, special plan to it. But by learning how to balance out your fats, your carbs, and your proteins, you're giving your body what it needs um, to survive and to function and to feel better. Um, you can find macro calculators online. Um, you can always contact me, which I know it will be on here, and I'll be happy to, to give you resources and help. But learning that teaches you how to look at food. Mm, I don't want to say balance, but it, it helps you understand what you're eating uh, with more knowledge. So, yes. when you're, so when you're looking at that, you're not assigning a points value to it. You're not labeling it good or bad. You're saying, this has this many fats, this many carbs, this many proteins. 
and you compare like a um, tr- a wrap from Trader Joe's to a candy bar, and you might mm-hmm. see that those two things are equal. You know, you might see that one has more protein than the other. So you just learn those mm-hmm. things, and you learn what you're putting in your body. And then when you eat them, you may realize that you have a, a better response, a higher energy um, response to one than the other. So um, anyway, I wanted to lay that out there that it's not a, a scientific, scary thing to look to be concerned about with macros. Yeah, well, that's that's a good point because – um, I know, I know for me and, you know, I think a lot of this stuff is like information is out there, like on, you know, Instagram and things like that. But there's also a lot of misinformation out there. Yes. Like I know for me, because I was eating clean foods, yes, I didn't really have any idea about serving sizes. Yes. And so, so like, for example, you know, avocados are what people would consider like a superfood. Right. Um, avocados are so good for you. Yeah. And so like, I would be like, avocados are good for you. Awesome. I'm going to eat a massive amount of avocados <laughs> today. So, okay. Avocados are pure fats, which packs a pretty big calorie punch. Yes. And so once I realized what food group avocados fell in, mm-hmm. what kind of calorie impact they had on me, and then what's a good appropriate calorie size for someone or um, what's appropriate serving size for someone like my height, what calorie yes. target I needed to hit a day to maintain where I was like, Oh, that changed the game for me. <laughs> yes. kind, kind of like what, when people realize what a serving size really is of peanut butter for the very oh, first yes. time. <laughs> that's so, that's like, depressing. That's depressing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's shocking. And so, you know, if you're listening and you've never heard of, you know, macros before, mm-hmm. then, or you've only heard a little bit about it, um, there's a lot of good information out there. But would you say it's really just about how you're breaking up your calories? It is, yes. So um, calories are always going to be king. I say calories are king. And then your macros work within your calories. Um, so it's, uh, they're, they work together. They're one and the same. Um, you set that calorie goal and then you set the macros underneath Good. those. Uh, but, you know, like you were saying, when you were dieting, uh, using the Whole30 and things like that, and like my client who now is dreaming more about ministry, she would have pers- said that she was a clean eater too, but still the food anxiety. Yes. And a lot of it goes down to just hunger and we don't equate anxiety with hunger, but a lot of times ladies and gentlemen, you're hungry is what it comes down <laughs> yes. to. You are hungry. Um, it, the, going back to the client I had, she increased 800 calories a day. That's not just one day. Every other day, it's 800 calories a day. And wow. her body was hungry and she yes. needed, she needed to eat. And so now that we've removed, well, now that we've added those 800 calories, the bigger picture is that that food anxiety has started to decrease. And so she's starting to look at food as more neutral. It's not, um, and again, pulling in cheat day type words and guilt and shame. She can sit down because she's grasping each day a more understanding of the macros and how they help her and how her food helps her. And she's not as afraid of food and she's not starving all the time. So she's Good. able to make a more informed choice. She's able to fuel her body properly. And in turn, she's able to quiet down that anxiety that she's having. And that kind of sounds something like what you've done. Food's become a little bit more neutral to you <laughs> to where it's not a constant overindulgence followed with, you know, shame and guilt or total restriction followed by why am I a failure? Why can't I get this right? So when you go back and you find that balance and you find out I'm feeding myself, I'm not hungry anymore, again, the ultimate goal is we can serve so much better. We can serve yes. better. We can serve ourselves better, our family better, God better. Our yes. Church. It just helps you feel better and do more. And really, that's what we want is we want to serve with our whole self, 
we yes. want to we want to go into our church excited, enthusiastic, um, ready for each service. And if we're eating significantly less than what we need, um, or we're eating a lot of little Debbie cakes and there's no balance, um, <laughs> yes. you know, yes. we're eating, um, you know, uh, or overindulging the night before or whatever the case may be, it's very, very hard to always be ready, um, to serve. Uh, it's just right. as difficult. It's difficult. Um, you are lethargic. You can't wait to get home to get a nap or you're constantly food focused and you're always worried about what you're eating next and just living in this heightened state of anxiety um, that isn't necessary. That's good. That's good. Um, I know um, for me, I'm a mom and I'm a pastor's wife. And I'm a leader and I want to be a good, a good example. So we have a lot of leaders, um, ministers that listen to this podcast. And so what would you say are some some tips or some tools that you can give to how they can promote a healthier, balanced lifestyle, um, especially when it comes to nutrition with the people that are looking up to us? Yes. Um, and I am super fortunate. Uh, my pastor's wife, Sister Jamie McCool, is like the beacon of balance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she yes. has always been um, just the beacon of balance. I've never really heard her talk about being on a diet. And she's probably been the same size clothing uh, for the past 25 years. <laughs> um, yes, she's amazing. What, yeah, she's amazing. Um, but what, And she's balanced in all things. Um, you know, rest um, is one way that plays into nutrition. It's not just about what you eat, but it's also taking rest, um, not constantly being in a frantic, frantic frenzy, running around type situation. Um, You know, that comes into the way your body responds to the food that you put in. Um, So prioritizing rest, working when work needs to be done, but, you know, you need to have a cell phone cutoff time. Good. At nine o'clock, put the do not disturb on and don't expect your pastor's wives or your leaders to answer text messages after nine o'clock. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Y'all, we, like, if we could get like a drum roll or something like, <laughs> yes, that's, that's good. Cause that's really yeah. hard for people to do un- unplug. So that's, yeah. yes. And rest plays a big part. Like I said, I just enrolled in precision nutrition, rest, recovery, and sleep. And it's a full um, course, certified course on those things. And so we are not getting enough rest. We're not recovering. We're not sleeping. That is a building block of nutrition. Uh, We want to really focus on, you know, what we eat, but there's other players that go into it. And so I think as a pastor's wife or in ministry, you know, try to have that cell phone cut off time. Um, And the same thing in the morning, you don't wake up and start responding immediately, you know, have some, some hours there and, and put rest and breaks as a norm, as a norm. Um, you know, I also think that if your saints need you, that's a different story. If there's an emergency, there's an emergency, but it's course, not an emergency. Of course, that, absolutely. That somebody, uh, somebody took my choir robe and I'm yes. upset about it. <laughs> right. That's not, yes. a, that's not a 10 p.m. text. <laughs> no. Um, so I think um, that's one way um, that they can promote that. Um, another is just, you know, if you're having uh, ladies groups, having a good variety of things to eat. Good. It might take a little bit of extra work to bring the fruit in because you can't always get fruit and throw it in the back of the car and drive around with it all day. You know, it takes a little bit of planning. But I think that if we're able to have more balanced choices when we have ladies get together. So I think that's really important because that models, you know, that there's options there. So if you have women who are working on health goals, they feel uh, less anxiety about attending them because they know there's going to be lots of choices there um, for them to be able to, to grab from. That's really good. I, I know that as a counselor, I encourage, um, and I know this is something that you uh, incorporate with your clients as well. Um, 
And I think there's a mesh. I think there's a meshing here. Uh, I encourage my clients about doing um, check-ins with themselves daily, uh, mentally, mm-hmm. um, you know, about, you know, kind of where they're, especially if they're dealing with a lot of anxiety, like where their anxiety was, like, how are they, how are they resting? Like what events yeah. of the day um, were triggering to them? And, and kind of understanding what was going on that day, because it's good information um, to take into the next day. And then, of course, as I'm meeting with them, understanding like what their what their triggers are. And so would you mm-hmm. say that that's something that people can do as well, like with their nutrition and understanding, maybe their triggers about food and overeating or undereating? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. I think doing... Um... You know, journaling, I ask my clients to journal, you know, just one or two nights. Like, Good. you know, what, um, and we do check-ins once a week. I'll say that with my clients. Um, we'll check in once a week. And we ask, I ask nutrition questions. We definitely talk about that. But I also talk about what was the most successful thing you did. Good. You know, last week. And what brought you joy outside of uh, food last Good. week. Good. Yes. Yeah. I love yes. it. So just taking uh, food, again, our goal is to give, that my clients get a good understanding of what they're eating, but also neutrality around just being neutral with food. And what other things are we focusing on other than that? So the daily check-ins, you know, what did you feel good about today? Yes. How was your self-talk? Yes. I sent a message out, I sent a message out to my clients today and I said, think of something you've said to yourself today about your body. If you're. If your husband or your best friend or your child would have said that to you, would that have put you in tears? So, you know, if I would have said about my body today, well, look at how big my stomach is. If my husband walked in the door and said, my Lord, look how big your stomach is. We have some problems. Yes. So, you know, I think that we have to be reminded that what we put in is what comes out. Yes. So, you know, if you're not feeling great about yourself today, find something to feel good about yourself, encourage yourself in that way, and then, you know, just line your goals up with that. You know, I'm not feeling really good. Well, have I had any fruits or vegetables today? Oh, no, I had a Swiss cake roll and a Coke. Okay, well, let's get, let's, you know, so you're not feeling good, let's get some vegetables in there. You know, so it's just saying, hey, where am I at? Why am I feeling this way? Is there anything in my control that I can do um, to maybe turn this around and give some positive self-talk? Good. That's good. And as a parent, uh, a lot of parents want to know how to model this healthy eating, healthy nutrition approach. And so what do you think are um, a couple of the best ways that parents can start off modeling these best practices for their kids. Yeah, I've got two young girls. I've got a six-year-old and a 10-year-old, and they are very different. Their body shapes are very different. Their personalities are very different, Um, but I have to model the same in front of both of them. Um, And so that has been a little bit um, of a challenge for me because one is very active and one is very academic. Um, Mm -hmm. Not as active and not as active. Um, so I can't force one to be less active or one to be more active, you know, this yes. is the way that, that God has designed them. And so, uh, you know, what we do here in our house is we always have fruit out and available. Um, mm. And so they see that that's out. And if they want that, it's there for them. Um, I'll often say, let's get a fruit so that we'll feel better. And then you can have whatever you want to go with that for a snack. So if they want the potato chips or whatever, I ask them to have a fruit first so that they that. feel good. And that's Love what I it. say. Let's get a fruit so we feel good. And then you can have whatever else you want. And so I just have to let that go and let them have, you know, whatever treat they want. Um, vegetables are always on their plate. They don't have yeah. to eat them. Um, but they're on the plate at every dinner that we have. Good. Over time, they've started eating them. Some nights more than others, but they're always there and available for them. I love that. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt. I just want to no, say no. really quickly before you keep going. I love yeah. that. I think that's such a godly principle because 
I think about when we're discipling someone in Christ Mm -hmm. and how they're just a babe in Christ. Mm -hmm. And all we do is we just keep, we don't force any of any of these biblical principles on anyone. We just keep putting it out there, presenting it to them and saying, this is here for you. This is what God has for you. This is the abundant life God wants to give you. And we just keep putting it on the table and it's there for the taking. We don't force anybody. Sorry. I just got so excited. (laughs) That's so so good. So, you know, it's, it's so God, that's such a godly approach. And I think that that's, really encouraging to parents who maybe their parents forced them to do certain things and they struggled with, you know, secretive eating or things like that. I think that that's, I think that's really encouraging. So continue on. No, that was perfect. (laughs) And I think that ties in perfectly because no, no one's forced anyone to do something and they've been like, I can't wait to do that because I've been forced to do it. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Like, oh, I can't wait to force me to do that again. Yes. Uh, but you know, just presenting it and eventually over time, you don't really have to make a big, you never have to make a big deal about it. And it just that's becomes right. something that's part of, of what they do. Um, and again, going back to just the, the macro part, protein, if you do any studying on this from the nutrition side, protein is very important. It yes. is not the only important thing, but protein is very important. And with children, they really do not get enough protein. Uh, they get a lot of carbs and as parents, it's easy to overlook that protein part, but protein is a building block for muscles. Good. Um, it helps muscle development. It helps, um, keep them fuller for longer. So that's why they're coming. They're not getting protein and that's why they're coming back and getting five and six handfuls of, uh, goldfish because they're not getting full off of the one hole, one handful of goldfish. So if you do any uh, research, just look into protein and it's okay. Look at the amount that you can give your children, but my children eat protein forward. So what that means is that I do, but I have also told my children like protein helps you. It makes you stronger. The protein makes you run faster and they know Mm -hmm. what proteins are. So Again, that works in my house, but I would encourage parents to just Good. look at how much they're getting. It can be beans, um, it can be chicken, anything like that. But um, I know that's a little, <laughs> a little getting deep in the weeds on that. But just that's learning about how to um, and talk about the words that way. You know, I tell my girls I call protein protein, and so it can be yogurt, but they understand that, and so that's they're good. able to hopefully make those choices as they get older. You know. We're going to eat the fruit first, that kind of yes. thing to, to just help them. I'm glad you said that because, um, like my daughter is four and she, um, you know, she loves, uh, I have one daughter that's four, one that's two and my two year old, she'll eat anything. I mean, she loves salads and she loves me. I mean, she just loves it all. And then my four year old, she's very picky and sometimes she does. She wants to only eat like handfuls of goldfish because you're right. Mm -hmm. She's not full. And so I think even for parents of young children, like if they're frustrated because they're feeling like their kids only are wanting snacks, then it's possible to say, Hey, you know, maybe work, work on them with getting more protein in, then they're going to feel full for longer Mm -hmm. and you won't have to fight so much them wanting to eat snacks all day long. Yeah. All day long. And you can use yogurts or string cheese um you know okay. so you don't have to you don't have to make them a hamburger <laughs> your two-year-old <laughs> a, you know a hamburger every she time. would love it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you can still get some yes. snacky things yes, and especially sure. now there's so many so yes. many options um at the grocery store that have protein in them for younger kids that's awesome well um we're so quickly like running out of time but yeah. i um Anything that you feel like it would be pertinent to add, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot. My husband does this to me all the time on the podcast. (laughs) He puts me on the spot. Um, But, you know, anything as we're closing out that you feel like you want to tell our listeners, hey, this is really important. Hey, remember this or go to this resource or whatever the case may be before we close out for today. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that um, going back to what you laid out um, about a new Christian and we just put things in front of them and over time 
um, you know, they, they start to partake more of that. And I think that when it comes down to balance and nutrition um, and tying it into your spiritual life, that you're looking for consistency over perfection. Good. You're looking for just to be consistent in what you're doing. You don't have to be perfect straight out of the gate. If all of this just floored you and you don't know where to start, just start somewhere. Yes. And just aim to be consistent. Um, and then also, it's not an all or nothing. Again, going back to that same principle. When a new soul comes to the church, we don't tell them like, you're going to be preaching next Sunday morning. <laughs> They would never come back. <laughs> they would never come back. It's, but what? But I don't know why we do that with with diet. You know, if Good. we don't get it right in thir- if we don't get it right in thirty days, then we're a failure, and All that right. could not be That's further good. from the truth. And so, you know, as you start to develop more healthy habits and more balance, give yourself grace as just as you would give yourself grace as someone new coming into the church. If this is totally new for you and you're wanting to make the turn. Um, to develop healthier habits, to get off of fad diets, give yourself grace, show up every day, try to be consistent Good. and don't set yourself up for an all or nothing, um, type performance. You know, this is something that's going to take time. I've been in this for 14 years, um, and I'm still learning every day. Um, so it's just a, a lifelong journey of learning. Uh, but once you, you know, get into the groove of it, it does become easier um, to be consistent. And so I just say, give yourself lots of grace. And I just applaud anybody who even looks up the word macro to start learning. Yes, um, that's great. Or, you know, any, anything that we've talked about today, um, you know, applaud yourself for that because it's a step in the right direction um, to get yourself feeling better. Great. So we, um, we're definitely going to link her information. Uh, Olivia's got a great uh, Instagram page with lots of information on there. Her stories are, I know um, she does like quick food, healthy food options. And I know like I've pulled up to the store and like, oh, let me look on Olivia's page real quick. <laughs> and I'll like get on there and like look at her stories and look at some of the things that she posted as ideas of what to eat. And so you know, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you're thinking, well, I just don't know that much about food, her page is going to be a great place for you to start. You can get on there, look around, check out her highlights on Instagram and look at some of the meal options that she has laid out. And you can just start seeing some of the pairings that she does and realize these are healthy, you know, balanced options. And then some of you may be thinking, um, this is something that I've been looking for. Are you are you currently like taking clients or is there a wait list or? Um, a little bit of both. So I am. So um, I've just uh, onboarded two new clients. So there might okay. just be a small, a small wait, one or two weeks just while I get these new clients onboarded. Okay. Um, but not a long wait list. Okay. Okay, great. So for some of you that are thinking, hey, you know, coaching is maybe something I want to do. Like I said, we'll have her information up there and you can start there. And she um, is apostolic Pentecostal. She understands all of the nuances of ministry and busy lives. And do you do men and women or just women? Just women right now. Just women right now. Okay. So just women right now. So I'm sure if you are a man or if you're a wife and you're looking for resources for your husband, do you have some places you can probably direct them to get some help? Um, So men, you're not left out of this at (laughs) all. She will direct you in the right direction if you're saying, hey, I need an intervention. (laughs) So Olivia, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I think that this was really helpful. I think our listeners are going to appreciate all the good information coming from someone that is godly and educated and has a balanced approach to nutrition and how that affects our mental health and our spiritual health. And so we thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. It was an honor. I appreciate it. Thank you.